Hey everyone, thanks again for tuning in to another uh, segment of Chisholm's Chair Shop. I appreciate it so much. I wanted to show you the progress on the Lincoln Rocker. I'm on st uh, step five of seven on the back. Um, I've set a goal for myself. I want to be done with this. I'm going to hope to deliver this chair uh, two Fridays from now in two weeks. And um, everything looks great. Real excited about the, how the tension is working out and the weave is fairly straightforward. Other than the curvature, it's a, a fairly rectangular weave. And I'm kind of showing you this in reverse. So when I do the seat, I'll go into a little more detail. There's more decision making in the seat. But I'll also be able to point upwards at the back that's already done as a reference point um, that might come in handy. So we'll see how that works out. But I'm going to change the camera real, real quick and show you what we've, I've got so far. I've got a piece of cardboard behind it. Um, to show you the contrast of light and dark so it'll show up a little better on film and then I'll change the camera again I've got one more strand to weave I want to show you the last step of what I've done to this point and then the first step of what I've got to do in two directions the diagonals so there's going to be all the way up the chair from top to bottom and diagonals going one way and then diagonals going the other way then binder cane that creates kind of a trim around the chair and then I walk away from the back it's done and then we can cruise the seat We've done a lot of seats and these holes are fairly spaced far apart there's a lot of them but it makes for a quicker weaving process so I noticed that right off the bat right off the get-go with the back as it it wove up much quicker than I anticipated so um, anyway let me change the camera real quick and then I'll change it again and we'll get started okay all right thanks all right so here it is here's where it is now we what we have essentially is a tic-tac-toe board we have doubles remember we started with one strand coming down laced up the whole chair then we laid on top a strand and laced up the whole chair so we had a tic-tac-toe board then every one of those strands we essentially have now doubled okay so the first one is just put on the next one lays on top no weaving the third one lays on top but this step what i had to do was weave this lower one of every one all the way down the chair i don't know how many there were but it's a lot and but i you know i did it in i did the center first and then I did the top down to here and then the top, the middle down to here and I ran out of uh, material here. So I have one more to do here at the bottom if you can see that. See how that needs to be a double? So I'm going to uh, rearrange and show you how, I, how I'm going to accomplish that. It's going to be a short piece of cane and um, we're going to just essentially peg it in and peg it in. And then I'll tuck the tails up and back through and it'll get caught up in the weave and we'll have no knots on the back if all goes as planned. Up here at the top, okay, I had some decisions to make. I did this just like the other chair, okay? And the other chair went from this point, the very corner, okay, over to the other very corner. I've seen chairs where People try to make this distance a little shorter. I, as, you see, as you can see, if you look at some of the prior videos, this was real gappy up here. So I, I used a slightly bigger cane and it got rid of that gappiness. And um, love the way it looks, it's much stronger. And also, I have seen chairs where people will, folks will come from, you know, maybe this hole to this hole to create less of a space here but I think it looks funny and also you don't get the X's that we're going to establish up here that are going to be consistent with the X's at least at the bottom they're going to be a little smaller on the sides I took very detailed pictures of this back before you know I dis before I cut it out so I've been referring to that but the original weaver or the last person to wove it definitely went corner to corner and I chose that it does push it down a little bit right here because this hole is almost horizontal it goes uphill a little bit more on this side and so once you know if you look back at some of the prior videos this was a spaghetti mess at first it was nothing but you know zero tension 
I still have plenty of room for tension. Look on the sides. Let me show you on this side. Maybe you can see it better. See it here? So it's getting tauter, but because we use that template, I think when we put in the diagonals, it's going to dial it right home, right where we want it to be. Okay? So, so far, I love the way it looks. Um, and it should, be, it should be pretty straightforward. It's just time consuming, you know. I'll start with diagonals and I'll go all the way. Go in this direction, and then they got to go all the way this direction. Woven up and over, up and over. And, you know, you can do it for a while, but one, it gets monotonous. Two, your fingers start to hurt. And uh, three, if it is monotonous and your fingers hurt, you should walk away and, and do a different project. And so that's what I do. But today's been really enjoyable, and I've gotten a lot done. I, I did the majority of this today, this morning. Um, so anyway, let me change camera angles, and we'll put in this final strip, and I'll show you. This is the, remember, this is step four, so this is the first part of weaving that's not just cane stacked on each other, which is pretty cool. It's deceptive. But if you keep going and be patient and follow the seven steps, I've all, that's the only way I know how to do it. Other caners will do the seven steps in different um, steps. But I know how to do it one way, and it's always rang true for me when I've done them. So uh, let me change up, and I'll show you some more. Thanks. Okay, so I'm going to adjust this as best I can. But remember, when I do the seat, I'll go into a little more detail with a better camera angle and better reference points. Okay, but I just want to show you what I'm, I need to get through to get going onto the seat. Okay. This last piece down here needs a double, just like all these, and this is the first of the we weaving process, okay? So, um, it's been a little bit since I, it's been an hour or so since I worked on it, so I'm just going to wet it down with a little bit of water, just a little bit. I don't want to get this too, I want it to weave smoothly, but I don't want it to get too loose so it fools me with its tension. And I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. I like to do the back just a little bit, just so it's even. I just know wood, if you wet one side, it likes to cup and do funny things. I, I like to wet both sides. But oh, And then I always want to, I've waxed the chair, but definitely wipe it up. I don't want to have any surprises. Um, see some of these tails um, sticking through, like right here? You know, I... And most people, when they're taught and should be taught, they tie these off. But that other method I was talking about, you can take this tail and stick it up through this hole, the one up next to it, and then keep weaving over it, and it gets captured in there. When you cut these seats out, it is so hard to get this stuff out of there because it has such a memory. It just it's, wants to stay put even when you cut it. Okay, so I'm going to um, change the... Uh, Angle one more time. Okay, so I've got a big, uh, long piece of cane here. This thing was probably nine feet long. I couldn't believe it. It's amazing stuff. It's really like thin pieces of wood. It has a little stretch to it. Um, but anyway, this is a very long piece. So what I'm going to do is figure about four inches out this way, four inches out this way, and I'm just going to cut off a piece to use for this last um, last strand. I, I thought I was going to be able to weave that long strand all the way to the bottom, but it didn't quite work out, okay? So, since I am weaving, I want to find which direction. So, I hit a snag there. It was The branch was growing that way or a twig or something, and it's the same direction all along it. So, that means I want to pull through this way so it doesn't catch, right? All right, so what I'll do, nothing funny is going to happen there if I undo this peg. So I'm going to put this in this hole, if you can see. And again, this is a, just a broad overview. I'll show you a little more detail here in a bit when we do the seat. Okay, now, this is going to be a little tricky because it's the lowest, it's the lower one, the arms are in the way, and... They're not spread very par far apart down here because of, you know, it's right at the hole. 
But essentially what I'm doing, what I need to do, is go under the first one. And this is great that it's a rocker because I can get a hand under it easy. But I'm going to go, I'm just going to copy what I did on all the other steps. Go under the first one and over the second one. Okay? Under the first one. And over the second one. Whoops. That's okay. I've got a little bit of a frayed end under here. It's going to make it hard to weave, so I'm just going to nip that. Okay, so once again, under the first. Yeah, it wants to fray on me. You can see it. But this is such a long piece, it makes no difference. Just cut that. Okay. And now I'm going to just, do, since it's the bottom one, you know, it's tauter. I'm just going to do about three or four at a time. Okay, I'll kind of keep a loop there, and then I'll send it home. But remember, I don't want to pull this tighter than its partner, because remember, the first one I put in, I established it essentially to this curve, so that this lower one wouldn't have too much sag in it and be beyond the wood, right? So I'm going to press right here just to give it that looseness that it needs to match its buddy. I don't want this going in a straight line and pulling the other one forward. I think it, that would seem to make the most sense. Okay, so yeah, equal tension. Equal tension is going to add up to being just right everywhere. I have a feeling. So yeah, this is a little slow going at first, and you want to make sure your cane isn't twisted. So you got to that way you'd have to pull the whole thing out again, which happens. Now this one looks like it moved just a little bit in its hole. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I've got a. There's some people that can do this with a hand on top. I've seen videos of people that have caned all their lives, and it is truly amazing to watch. But it's quicker than this. But this is the hardest one. Yeah. And what you don't want to have happen is have it crimp, like completely crimp, because that weakens it. And it could break at the crimp one day if it doesn't break right, right away. Okay, so I'll pull that true, push down on it so it's still in the curvature. So when it dries, it doesn't shrink too much and pull it pull it too taut. So I'm about halfway across. I can find it. There it is. Over, under, there it is. I just went over. It's about to make a mistake. So it's over that one. And I'll come up. It's easy to come up sometimes when you're right at the end like this. I'll, if I can get it to line up, yeah, I'll come up right here. And I'm just going to do these kind of individually till the end. And pull it taut every three or four. Yeah, that's working better.
Make sure there's still enough slack in it that I'm not pulling its buddy forward. I love it. Okay? Three more. There it is. Come on. I saw it. There she comes. Don't let it crimp. Don't want it to break right there. We just came all the way across. All right, perfect. One more. Under the first, spread these apart. Okay, so now I'll give it a little tug just to pull out any thing weird. It's not gonna, there's too much tension for it to affect all the way back here. I'd already done that, but just wanna make sure that it's not too taut. All right, and I did that on each one all the way up. And then we'll bury it in this hole. Okay, now I'll go ahead and show you that. Move this over. Yeah, so anyway, I buried it in this corner hole. I came all the way across. You can see a little better now. I buried it in this corner hole. I'm going to peg it. And then I'll bring the tail up through this corner hole as a visual reminder that you know, I want to catch that up in the weave as I start to do these diagonals. So what I'm going to do is change the camera ag angle and then show you how I start a diagonal. And then I'm going to get the majority of that done and then touch base again and do the other ones. And uh, we'll start on the seat and move through that and it'll be re ready to go. All right. Stand by. Okay, I hope you can see that a little better. I know there's a kind of modeled background behind, but when I do the seat, this should be blue behind it from the blanket. Um, so anyway, we've got this nice tic-tac-toe pattern. We just put in this bottom strand, so we've got everyone doubled horizontally and vertically. The last step, step four, incorporated the first bit of weaving where we wove this lower strand on every one between the three stacked layers we had on top of each other. So it's now a woven unit. And when we put in these diagonals, it's going to set up just how it is, okay? So what I've done and what I normally do is, if, if you'll remember, this was a spaghetti mess at first, and it's now tightening up just the way I wanted, um, and it's going to get even tighter when we put the diagonals in. But because um, all of that just takes up space and it just makes the the cane have subtle differences that all add up to however much okay so um, these diagonals so anyway to make a long story short I usually stare at the chair for about 30 or 40 minutes I'll walk by it and every time I see this was such a mess at first to get it back to this it took me about 30 or 45 minutes but what I do is I'll, I just want to look at it so because I'm getting ready to lock it all into place. And, you know, I just want to have a nice, even size of squares, you know. And when I put in the diagonals, it pulls a lot of this tight, right?
And up here at the top, I think this is kind of the happy medium right where I have it. I like this, the spacing here. This could maybe go up just a little bit right there. I like it. Okay, I like this spacing. This, I think it looks great, and it looks real vertical. You know, these, these so, the, the distance between the cane here on the side and the side of the chair is a little less than, you know, here and here, which is fine, but we're, we're still going to have X's. So this is, this is essentially now a rectangle, um, and our tension warriors, I hope, are over, and it should weave up just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a long piece of cane again. I'm going to do this with as few tails and things as possible. And I'll find the end that I bury. And usually what I do is instead of worrying about the corners, those fall into place. I'll usually start somewhere random almost where I know it's the same weave, you know, from this portion to this portion, filling up this whole area right here is going to be the same repetitive, not many decisions to make, as many decisions to make. Okay? Um, but in this case, with this little doodad, I'm going to do it just the opposite. <laughs> Okay, so what I want to do, and I hope you can see this, I'm going to adjust this slightly towards this upper corner here, right here. Okay? So this upper, actually, I, I'm going to start from the left. I'm going to treat it like a seat. I always start, I start always the same. Okay? So I st I'm going to start on the left, and... What I'm going to do is back weave it to find out where it goes in the hole. And this comes with, with time. This is very difficult to learn at first. But once you see it, it's like riding a bike. You just see it and it just happens naturally, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back weave it. When I start at the left, since I always start at the left, my first diagonals come from left down this way, all the way, the whole chair. And I've always taught myself under verticals, UV, like UV rays. When I start at the left, I'm always going under the verticals. That means I'm going over the horizontals, okay? Um, so UV, under vertical. So let's see what happens when I go under this vertical. And the other thing is, I almost forgot, I'm going to use a slightly half a millimeter less diameter cane than this tic-tac-toe pattern on the diagonals. The eye won't pick it up, it's the same as the seat, so it should just all flow. And even the binder cane around the top is smaller, this has fat binder cane around the seat back here, smaller binder cane around here. So I'm going to use diagonals um, that are half a millimeter smaller and the holes are going to come out just right. I have a feeling, and I'm glad I just remembered, I have a feeling that if I use this exact same, it'll look fine and the books say it's going to be fine, but on the back of a rocker, the books are mostly referring to a seat on the back of the rocker needs to be a little more airy in my opinion or it could or it could look um, you know the whole pattern could look too tight so let me adjust the camera one more time and I'll be right back so this is how cane when you order cane which usually comes from Malaysia or China um, this is what it comes in this is this is a half hank I believe 500 feet or so. Um, a full hank is a thousand feet. Depend it depends on the size of the chair, but um, you know, a half hank can often do two or one and a half. It's best to have plenty on hand. And it does go bad, so you want to keep it fresh, okay? But when I take it apart, if I can get my nippers in the right place. I'll usually leave this little part up here.
It's amazing stuff. It is so tough. It's just perfect for weaving. Whoever figured it out, it's just... They knew what they were on to. Yeah, and I'll get rid of that crimp sometimes. But I like to have one left on there. And that way, when I go to hang it up, I'll change the camera. I have a little rack. That black piece up here. I'm going to take it and just hang it here. This way it's just kind of out of my way. But for now, before I do that, I'm going to pull out one piece just to show you. See if I can find a smaller one. It's best to pull one side or you can get a mess on your hands. Hope it comes right out. Yeah, there it comes. Okay, perfect. All right, so I'll hang this back up and I'll clean that up here in a second. Good fresh material. And so what I like to do is then take that piece and just put it into a coil. As so. About as big as a saucer. Just a nice long piece. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to give this a soak for a couple minutes, and I'll be right back. I'll change the camera angle, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I put the chair like this just to have a blue-black background, although it's upside down, just might give you a little better view of the contrast. But anyway, I'm going to take this peg out right here and show you, take these two out, and show you at the corner, you know, there's a hole here in the corner, and the original weaver went from this corner to the other corner. Some people will cheat the whole thing down and connect from like here over to here. I just think it looks funny on a rocker. So I'm doing it the same way. Um, and what I normally do is I'll start near a corner or at a corner. Today I'm going to start at this corner because it's so near this other corner. I want to make sure I nail where I'm headed right off the get-go. Okay, So I'm thinking I'm going to come in this way and then weave this direction towards myself, okay? But I always start in the left and um, come down this way. So I've looked at this enough. I love the pattern. I love the spacing. It all looks right to the eye. Um, caning looks so square, but when you sight down them, there's a lot of curvature involved, and especially caning something with so many curves in it, okay? So... Um, let me get that uh, cane out of the pot. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. Once again, I'm going to find the weaving end. Okay, so I hit a snag there. The branches are growing up like that. So I, that means I want to bury that, and that way that'll slip through the weave. Okay? So what I'm going to do, since I know I'm going under the verticals and over the horizontal, I'm going to come in near or maybe where I'm guessing the hole might be. So I'm going under a vertical. I'm back weaving. Under a vertical, over a horizontal. And what I'd like to do is establish the beginning of my first X. In the old day, or, you know, there's some schools where you'll take apart a chair and the person went into this hole. That's how they used to teach it. Or that's how some people do it. I'm not, I'm not sure of the history of that. But, and that's the closest hole. But when you... If I can get under the, this little pair and get into this hole, okay, that creates the first portion of an X. And then when I do the diagonals the other way, and another one line will show up across it, and it'll be X's all the way across. And it not only is it stronger, but it looks really cool. Okay, and that's what I'm hoping to achieve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get under that pair. 
Okay, remember we're back weaving. This is the tail end. I'm going to take this little tool here and I'm going to see if I can, without hurting anything, make it just enough space to feed this under there. Yep. Then I'm going to grab it. Then I'll put it under it and make kind of a ramp for it to go up. See it coming up? And now I can get a hold of it. So, I mean, it's a tricky little move, but it's not that bad. Okay. Make sure nothing's crimping funny. Okay, so, even though, you know, these holes are, are close together and, and we had to do a little manipulation there to get it under there, I feel real good that this one is going to disappear down into this hole, creating essentially our second X. There'll be something here. This might look more like a spider web. I, we'll have to see as we go. But So now I can take this, keep, keep my handy, hand on the top the whole time, and now I can just weave away on this one. Okay, whoops, I lost it, so I'll start over. And just see where it ends up. And this is where you, you'll get lost at first. But what you do is, I'll just keep telling myself, under the vertical. So I've, I've been... Um, i got to start from under here. i got ahead of myself. Okay, under the verticals, over the horizontal. Under the vertical, over the horizontal. Okay, so this next one, since it goes under the vertical, which is right there, right here, right here, make sure I don't have too many, any, any twists in it whatsoever, not crimping anything too much, let me go ahead and get it up on top, see if I can manipulate a little better. There we go. It's tough stuff. Switch hands. There we go. Yeah, I think I got it rolled. Let's see. Can't tell. Keep losing it. There it comes. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so over the under the vertical, over the horizontal, under the vertical, over the horizontal, and then the closest place it can go in again is here. So that's under the vertical, over the horizontal, and once you see where you're going, you can stitch it up. Okay, under the vert, whoops, came up the wrong one. Under the vertical, over the horizontal, under the vertical pair, over the horizontal pair. Okay, I went about three, let me pull it through so I can see what's going on. Keep out any crimps, pull it home. Perfect, okay. So we've got that taken care of. We can push this back up to where it was as close as we can get it. So it's going to be a little bit of a curve there, which is fine. That's just the way the chair was made. So I'll continue across here and bury one, and then I'm just going to repeat this process, and then I'll touch base. When I start the next direction. And it'll be over the verticals so just the opposite if you do it the same way it doesn't pull smooth you can tell something's wrong it's pretty weird and you can help it along you know you friction does bad things over time I mean a long piece of cane sometimes you'll by the time you get to the end of it it's a little 
it's had it today. So it's good to keep everything as wet as possible. I should spray this down here shortly. But the cane's still fairly supple. Not pulling everything out of Ford, right? So over the horizontal, under the vertical, over the horizontal, under the vertical, over the horizontal. All right, we got a decision to make coming up. And it's related to the decision we made at the beginning. And that's how to create that X, that extra strength and that cool look that we want. It'll look like it has stitches going all the way around the chair. At least the top part. And the most of the bottom. Okay. So this one is going to create, you know, instead of putting it into this hole, the closest hole, this one going over the, hor the horizontal, remember, under, under the vertical, over the horizontal, under the vertical, over the horizontal. If we go into this hole, it's doing the same thing it did over um, at the other side. And it's creating that line, the first line of the X. So that was an easy one to... Uh, Get to. Okay, so I'll bury that. And then I'm going to come, then I'll peg this. I'm going to come back up through this hole. I'll give that tail a little tug. I'll just pretend like that's not the right, right there for now. Because hopefully, eventually, I'll push down on it and it won't even go down. It'll be so caught up in all kinds of stuff underneath it. Okay, so now, in order to achieve, achieve this same line, which I'll show you again in further detail, I want to go over this pair and under this pair. Okay, so I'll keep my hand on the top. So we're going to go over this pair, and then here, and then we're just going to railroad track right next to his buddy, the same thing all the way down. And these nice big holes just make it so much easier on the hands. All right, I'm going to give this, well, I feel something weird. Yeah, I see where I messed up. Okay, glad I caught that. So. Under the vertical, I didn't go down in there. And you're kind of going corner to corner to corner to corner. It's really hard to see at first. It looks like a guesstimate, but it's not. After just a chair or two, you got it. Okay, that's about four or so. Actually, I went more than that. I forgot. Pulling nice and smooth though. Okay, I want to make sure that's turned correctly in the hole so it finishes just right. Loving the underside. Okay, so you can see these, these beginning kind of swooping ups. The, if you were to have an X, there's half an X. So we're on the right track. So I'm just going to finish this one up and then we'll tune in again when I'm heading the other direction.
and I'll show you a little more detail on the seat. Let's lace this up. I like it just like that. Okay. Lost it. Shiny side up. Okay, so over the horizontal, under the vertical, over the horizontal, under the vertical. Okay. These are going to slowly get bigger, the part we have to tuck under, so it should get a little easier. I think I'm going to pull it all at once if it'll go right under like I think. Yep. Make my little ramp so I can get a fingernail under it. Yep. Perfect. Okay. So this comes all the way through. tighter than it has to be yet. And then this one is going to come over here and form another line across here. You know, a lot of this will hide by the binder cane. What I might do as I can before I continue this way, okay? What I might do is put in another couple strands this way to see how my corner turns out. Because if I continue this way and don't like the corner so much, there's no retreat. That's the cool thing about caning. It's like chess, but you can't retreat. Or it's similar to chess in that you can't really retreat. You have to keep going forward and make certain decisions. So um, this is a complicated corner with these two holes at the same, almost at the same level. I, I just want to see this before I take the time and do this because if I have to remove two pieces, no problem. 15 minutes. So anyway, uh, let me change the camera angle one more time. Yeah, so thanks again for tuning in. Um, I'm going to finish those diagonals and then uh, start that diagonals the other direction. And then we'll do the binder cane around the back and do the seat. The seat should go fairly quickly. And uh, you'll be able to see the seat a lot, a lot more in detail about some of the decisions that we'll make regarding the weaving of it. So... Anyway, I appreciate it once again, and I'll see you soon, okay? All right, y'all have a great day. Bye.